name's Ben and welcome to Ben by Design. Today I'm going to be making some collapsible saw horses. So the first step for these collapsible saw horses is the legs. Uh, I'm going to cut um, eight legs because um, I've got, uh, I'm going to make two saw horses. Um, they're going to have a 22 degree angle at each end. Um, and they're going to be 32 inches long um, to give me a nice stable platform. What I've just done is I've just marked up a uh, 90 degree angle on this end um, and then a 45 and then split the difference so I get the 22 and a half degrees. Um, I'm going to be using a, a normal hand saw and I'm just going to use a, a 90 degree bit of wood to keep my uh, cut straight. So the next step is to measure out and cut the length um, with the same 22 and a half degree angle on the opposite end. So now I'm just going to cut the opposite end. So that's the first leg cut. I'll just repeat it another seven times now and then we'll move on to the next step. I've cut the legs now, um, I'm going to move on to the next stage, which is just um, getting them set up so they stand like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fit, fix one leg to the top, um, which is here, um, and then the other leg is going to hinge off of it so it folds flat, um, so that I can fold it away. So I will show you that now. So now the top's cut to length. I'm just going to measure and mark where I want the legs to go. I'm going to bring them an inch in either side so I've got a little bit of uh, overhang on each end. So I'm just going to use these conventional door hinges. Um, they might not be the right ones for so they're what I've got, um, so I'm going to see how this goes. If they don't work out, I'll replace them with something better. Um, but uh, the first job for these is I need to mark out and then remove the material so they sit flat in each leg, so the legs fold up nice and flush to each other. in this leg and it just sits just inside the, the top so that uh, when it's uh, flush against it it doesn't stop the leg sitting flat against each other. Uh, I'm just going to remove the material so the hinge sits just inside the leg and then repeat it on the other side. Recess the hinge in there now. Um, I've done it so that the hinge actually, when it shuts, uh, folds flat. Um, so that when I recess it into the other side, um, the actual wood sits flat and there's not a gap between them. Um, so what I'm actually
actually going to do now is I'm going to fix this leg onto the um, top and fix this side of the hinge in um, and then once I've done that I will then hold up the other side against it and mark out where uh, the hinge needs to be. So what I've done is I've fixed the leg to the top um, with the hinge um, and then holding the other leg next to it, I've just marked where the hinge is um, to, so I can cut that one out um, and then I can screw it to the other one. Uh, notch in the other leg and I'm now going to attach the two together. I've taken this one off because um, otherwise I wouldn't be able to uh, get the screws in. So now I've fixed the two legs together a nice A-frame and um, I'm going to glue and screw uh, the fixed leg to the top and then uh, then repeat the same on the other side. As you can see I've now uh, attached the legs to the base um, and they fold flush together and then out to a 45 degree angle. That should give me a nice stable base um, to ensure that when I'm working with them they don't wobble around too much. It's getting late now so I'll continue the project tomorrow and finish off the other leg and put in a locking piece to keep it open once uh, I'm using it. My video yesterday I put uh, one leg together with the hinge so it folds shut um, and I've done the, the same on the other side this morning before I started filming and this is what it looks like on both legs to stop the A-frame trying to uh, splay open and uh, breaking away from the top. Um, so I've got these couple of battens which I've already cut to length and I'm going to use these dowels um, that I've cut off along the length. What I'm going to do is flip this upside down. Gonna mark where these need to sit on on the leg. The next step is to mark and drill the holes for the dowels to fit in. So to drill the holes, I'm using this uh, sixteen mil uh, drill bit to drill the holes in, in both legs. The next stage of this is to glue the dowels into um, the four holes um, so they're fixed in place. To do this, I'm just going to use a regular 
with glue um, that you can buy at any uh, hardware store. The next stage of this is to put a, a hole in one end so that the bar sits over um, one side and a, a hole with a, a notch out so that you can hook it on when you want to use it. That will then lock uh, both legs at a set width so that when you're using it the saw horse isn't trying to collapse. To do it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay both pieces down together and drill through both of them at the same time so that I know the distance between the legs on both sides is the same. So I'm just going to use a bit of sacrificial wood underneath it um, to stop flow out and also so I don't drill in the So I've added on the brackets to the base and they uh, the legs in quite nicely and then put it down, fold the legs out and fold the arms down. It's a bit trickier than I wanted it to set up um, but I'm going to add some details to it, so I'm not going to add any finish to it or anything at the moment. Um, there's going to be some additional parts added as I go along and as I improve the design. But just to show you how strong it is with the uh, locks in place, it'll quite happily take my weight, so it should be fine for any woodworking purposes. And there's not much movement in it, which is good. So much for watching my video don't forget to subscribe to my channel and i hope to see you in the next one